fronts based off the back. So our first front based off the back is our tread front. And basically, um, instead of having your strength based off of the field, now that we know, especially that I talked about before, when there's a zone side and a sally side to each play, now we want to base what our defensive line is doing based on the location of the running back, because that's going to tell us a lot. So in a tread front, what we're going to have is we're going to have our three technique to the side of the back. So we want to have our three technique on the same side of the back, as you can see right here. Let me erase that. And then we're going to have our one technique on the side of, um, we're going to have our one technique away from the back. The ends are going to be in the exact same positions. Um, they're going to be the Sally player, or they're going to be the post and shimmy player. And the Mike and the Will, they're going to play this, um, this B gap and this A gap from depth. So one thing I talked about um, earlier is um, different penetrations and different exchanges that we could do as a defensive end to help create penetration and to help get ourselves in the backfield, especially on a first down. So one thing you could do, especially when we're away from the back in this tread call, is we could do what's called a tread jab. And basically what that is, is instead of having our defensive end play the C gap and have this Mike play this B gap from depth, what we're going to do is instead we're going to do a gap exchange. So our end is going to jab inside into this B gap and create penetration and either get a T TFL or cause it, cause the running back to bounce back. And our mic is going to bounce around and play this A gap. And I'll just show you guys a great clip of that. So here's us running it against Montreal. And just as a quick pre-snap, you can see, so we're offset from the back on this left side right here. You can see number 56. He's going to be our jab player. Um, we have our one technique on, a, on away from the back. We have our three technique. He's going to play three technique on the same side of the back. So he's going to play that B gap. And then we have um, our linebacker that's going to wrap around and play that C gap. One more thing before I play this clip. Um, you see me on this backside, on the same side of the back. What we're doing right here is we have what's called a kill technique. And with this technique, instead of me being a shimmy player, because we're playing um, a very explosive quarterback that likes to do a lot of zone read, what we're going to do is we're going to run what's called a high-low concept. And basically on this high-low concept, I'm going to run up to the quarterback and I'm going to play the quarterback strong. So make sure that the quarterback can't play. And then 44 he's going to be the low player and he's going to play the running back. So I'll just let that play through. And you can see right here from the strong side. So you can see away from the back, the zone is coming towards this defensive end. He jabs inside of this B gap and then he forces a cutback from the running back. There's no other gaps open and he fills it back to our low player. That's a great so, shot there, Robbie. Who, who has the C-gap ultimately uh, if the ball bounces to the front side C-gap here? So for this play, I'm not exactly sure um, what this play is exactly, but most times when we played it, um, that Mike linebacker would be the scrape player. So he would be the one to scrape into that C-gap. Gotcha. So he's got to almost play then because he shoots the, the weak A here. I'm just interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, had, I love this for playing zone read, and I hadn't actually seen this. Um, so that Mike is almost two gap, and then he's going to play like the da he he'll play like he'll fit to the back essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the yeah, back's yeah. wide. He's wide. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. So and just with the jab technique too. So there are a couple different ways that you could play the jab technique. So there's a couple. So the first way you could play it is you could just spike into that B gap and rip under, or you could do what number fifty six uh, Bishop does, and he actually puts hands on the tackle and then he rips underneath to get penetration in that gap. And then you could see everything else. So you could see that guard. He's playing that A gap. You see that weak side A gap getting played. You see that backside tackle. He's playing that B gap. And then we have me coming up to Vernon Adams here, playing the quarterback on that high concept. And then Ian Wild, he's a, that low player, and he's the one that ends up making the tackle. 
And again, you see how like basic understanding even builds here, right? Like you go from understanding, okay, what is the front? In high school, you know, you're usually playing one technique, right? Like you would either always be in shuffle or, or whatever. You always have the quarterback. Now you get, you know, up a level and you need more tools offensive or defensively, right? To handle the variety of, of offense that you see and the different skill sets and, and challenges formations put you in. And so if you, you know, if you're a young player watching this, I just hope you get an appreciation for, you know, exactly how much there is out there to learn. Like this is a, I've spent the last year trying to learn more concepts to handle, you know, defensively, like we were talking tight front before we got on, right. To like handle zone read. And I hadn't even, I hadn't even heard of this one yet. And I spent the last year on it. So, you know, it's uh, it's, this is great stuff. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So just moving on to that. So that was our tread call. Now we're going to move on to what's called our flip call. So our flip is going to be the opposite of tread basically. So when we look back to our tread, we have our three technique on the same side as the back. Now in our flip call, we're going to have our three technique away from the running back. And then same thing. So our nose will be on the weak side A gap. And then now our bite, our mic will be on that strong side A gap and our will will be on that weak side B gap. So what this allows us to do is the same thing. If the running back is running zone away, or so if we're running offset the back and the running back is running zone away, what he's going to do is he's going to try and cut back into that strong side A gap. Um, and this is where a good rodent call would make perfect sense. And what we did, and I'll show you a couple of clips of that, is we ran another first down stunt in the run game to help us um, beat this run offset the back. So what we did here is instead we took our defensive tackle and in the three tech position, and we would jet him upfield to help create the cutback for the running back. So he would almost be the contained player. And then this would cause the, run back, the, the running back to cut into that strong side a gap. And then the end, he would be, have a rodent call or a text call, what we would call in a pass game, but he would run a text also in the run game. So he would take one step upfield and then he would wrap underneath the tackle into this A gap and make a play on the running back there. And then on the same backside, we would have whatever you want to do, whether it's a crash call or a kill call that we had, or this backside end would be the shimmy player. But he would be playing on the Sally side of the quarterback. So he would be the CBR player or what we call the cutback boot reverse player. Just another way of calling it. Um, just another way of saying your, that your responsibility is a Sally. Um, the mic would have this weak side uh, B gap and then the, or the will would have this weak side B gap and the mic would wrap around to the tackle. And I'll just show you guys two plays of that. Yeah, this is firing me up that you brought this up. I actually, uh, I actually wrote an article for Ron Mackey football. So uh, American website about, I had heard about this stunt and I had never really seen it played. I've been looking for examples of it as an interesting way to get to play six gaps with five guys. Yeah. And uh, I was particularly drawn to it because I thought, hey, in Canadian football, we're a yard off. Like, obviously, part of what's challenging about this is actually running that rodent stunt correctly. Like, do you read with the defensive end? Like, if, if it's not, if it's not pass, is he still, if it's not run, is he still running the text? Yeah, so that's um, the way we did it. With our, it would just go into a, a, a longer text. So um, the defensive tackles are the three text job. His job would remain the same because he's trying to get upfield as much as possible. And then if they ended up passing on first down, um, you would still just run the text um, just like you would normally. Yeah, but that is, uh, yeah, that is something that we had. I've seen some American teams where they will still run the text, but I've seen it where basically same idea, but you can get the will out of the box. And the mic ends up playing like the backside B and then mm -hmm. your, your rush end is essentially playing like C to a gap. Um, yeah. And, and if it does get outside of, of the end, then the overhang player has got to take it. But I've even seen teams where they'll run it. And if they get stretched, the end will stay outside. Uh, and oh, okay. Yeah. 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 They'll read it off the back or they'll read it off the tackle. Um, mm -hmm. So man, this is, uh, this is awesome stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just, uh, quickly, I'll just, um, explain it again. So right now you see we're offset of the back. So you see on the left side, 
Um, that's going to be our zone side. On the right side, that's going to be our Sally side. So more often than not, because we're on the Sally side, if you see this right defensive end, number 75, he's going to be our cutback boot reverse player. So he's going to be that shuffle shimmy player, making sure the quarterback doesn't take it. And here, uh, number 93, Kwaku, he's going to be um, he's going to be our post shimmy player. But right now, this play, again, this is, would be the flip rodent. So right now, you can see we're in a flip technique. So we have our three tech away from the back right here. We have our three tech away from the back. We have our one technique on the same side as the back. And then what's going to happen, number 90 is going to jet upfield. He's going to create contain to stop uh, number 23 called to cut back. And number 93, this left defensive end, he's going to wrap it all the way around into this A-gap. And we'll just look at that here. Great TFO. Celebrate. Get up. Awesome. A little so love can... for the, uh, the Laurier partner in crime there. You love to see it. Yeah, I, I got to shut him out. When I saw this play, I got to add it in there. But just a great way of just understanding what they're trying to do, um, understanding what an offense is trying to do in a typical zone play. This helps you a lot. Knowing where his cutback lanes are um, makes this ro rodent so successful, right? Um, being able to cut back from that C gap to cut into that strong side A gap, knowing that that's where he's going to want to go. Perfect. And I'll just show you guys one more example of that. So this is uh, the Argos. We ran something similar against um, Montreal. And you can see the same thing is going to happen here. So we have our three technique away from the back. So we have that A-gap open. Our mic is going to play our weak side A-gap. And what's going to happen here is our three technique, he's almost going to do a swim move in the run game to get up field as much as possible to cause that running back to cut, to, to cut back. And number 54, our defensive end in this situation, he's going to put hands on the tackle and then he's going to wrap inside and run that rodent or run that tech stunt into that a gap, right? Where they're trying to run the zone. He gets a nice TFL. Oh, yeah, see, this is kind of what I liked it for. Like 27 can stay out of the fit, right? Because you essentially play like the end plays the C initially, which makes it impossible for the, the tackle to play the to play the three technique, right? So then the yeah. three technique gets out of the field. Well, the back's got to cut it back. So even though there's no one that ends up in the C, and I'm sure you could say your Sam linebacker, like overhang, you know, yeah. can can play it or or zero could run over the top of it. Right. And, and, you know, hopefully make that play. But uh, th this is the exact reason um, I might have to dive deep into uh, if you got a cut up of these, I might have to dive deep into it. Cause this is something that I find so intriguing, you know, and again, we talked about like great stuff going on, on on this side of the border. I think in Canada, we've been stressed more about finding ways to defend RPOs like for years. Right. Yeah. That, that you know, since, since I was watching, you know, Anthony Calvillo throwing RPOs, CFL you know, <laughs> 10, 15 years ago, right? Yeah. And see these creative solutions, which yes, have, you know, their, some of their roots might be in the American game, but like the way that you fit it into, you know, a 12 man structure and deal with the, the challenges you see, you know, in the Canadian game, this is awesome, you know, really high level stuff. And it all comes back to you understanding fronts. Like there's both your alignment and then there's like your implied role within the, within the front, right? Like if you're, you know, if you're playing the three technique, right, you're playing with a totally different set of leverages than if you're the one technique. So I think where a lot of guys like stop learning, you know, at the, okay, I line up in the B gap, I have the B gap. Well, yeah, in a fundamental football world, sure. But like, this is what you're going to have to 